Sports Illustrated's Ross Dellinger talked to Nick Saban about the SEC's future scheduling format. And we've talked about this on the show. It's either an eight-game conference schedule with one permanent rival and four rotating opponents uh, home and away every two years, or it's a nine-game conference schedule with three permanent rivals and six rotating opponents home and away every two years. That's widely rumored that the brands that have more trouble making bowl games would prefer to stick with an eight-game conference schedule so they can schedule four non-conference games, thus making the schedule a bit easier. Uh, The bigger brands, it was thought, were good with basically anything. But uh, Nick Saban basically said, hold up a minute, when he saw Alabama's proposed three permanent rivals. He told Dellinger, I've always been an advocate for playing more conference games, but if you play more games, I think you have to get the three fixed opponents uh, correct. He said, they're giving us Tennessee, Auburn, and LSU. I don't know how they come to that decision. Uh, Well, first off, like, those are Alabama's three biggest SEC rivals. Like, LSU most recently, but Auburn and Tennessee were always going to be on there. Uh, but I'll admit, like, if they were looking for competitive balance along with regionality, like, it would make more sense for Alabama to get Mississippi State every year uh, as there's only 82 miles between Tuscaloosa and Starkville. And to me, this screams that they're trying to make the permanent opponents as friendly for television as possible. Like, they claimed in the article that it has to do with uh, a 10-year sample size. And if you look in that 10-year sample size, Tennessee is in the bottom half of the conference, right? So uh, the teams that are in the top half of the conference had to get two teams from that top half and then one team from the lower half. And Alabama's lower half just happened to be Tennessee. But this is not... like Tennessee, historically, like just look at the past like 25 years as opposed to the last 10... And Tennessee is definitely a top half of the conference program. So I I get it. Um, But let's, you know, if they're trying to do this as friendly for television as possible and then just trying to find excuses for everything else, I get it. Let's let's look at the numbers here for these three matchups. Uh, 2022, Alabama-Auburn, or the Iron Bowl, had 6.27 million. In 21, it was 10.37. In 2020, it was 6.66. That's right, number of the beast. Uh, 2019, 11.43 million. And in 2018, 9.132 million. All right, now we move into the third Saturday in October, Alabama, Tennessee. This year, it did 11.56 million. In 2021, it was 4.68. In 2020, it was 4.36. In 2019, it was 4.25. And then in 2018, it was 4.305. Now, Look at the LSU game, which is the one that I think everybody was kind of surprised by. The other two, obviously, Alabama's going to play Tennessee and Auburn, right? But LSU, 2022, 7.58 million. 2021, 5 million. 2020, 4.22. 2019, it did 16.64 million. And then in 2018, it did 11.543 million. Now, if you remember us talking about how the magic number for TV networks, um, you know, it's 4 million. I'm sure you remember that, right? Four million viewers, and that is a premier, premier spot. You can sell ridiculously ad or ridiculously high priced ads for a game like that. Even during the COVID season in 2020, there is not a single matchup between Alabama and Auburn, Tennessee, or LSU that did less than 4.22 million. And and that 4.22 was in the COVID season when LSU was putrid. Like Alabama was up 45 to 14 at the half en route to a 55 to 17 win. Tennessee had been just meh every season until 2022, and the lowest number there was 4.25 million. Like, the averages for these games over the past five years, against Auburn, it's 8.77 million. Against Tennessee, it's 5.83 million. And against LSU, it's 9 million. So with this information, it is pretty obvious that the SEC believes uh, that they can get more money from ESPN because you don't move to nine games uh, if the games aren't worth more money. Like, if ESPN was going to stick with the status quo on the contract, uh, the SEC would not add that additional conference game just for the tradition of the rivalries. Like, when when it comes to tradition these days, the only tradition any conference cares about is stuffing bags full of cash. Like, you don't do something extra to not make more money. It's not a smart business decision, uh, et cetera, right? So on top of Alabama catching LSU, Tennessee, and Auburn every season, Alabama's also set up to play two Power 5 non-conference games in each of the next 10 seasons, starting in 2025. Now, I'm going to go ahead and roll through all of them, uh, so get ready. In 25, it's at Florida State and host Wisconsin. 
26, at West Virginia, host Florida State. 27, host West Virginia, at Ohio State. 28, host Ohio State, at Oklahoma State. 29, at Notre Dame, host Oklahoma State. 30, at Georgia Tech, host Notre Dame. 31, host Georgia Tech, at Boston College. 32, host Arizona, at Minnesota. In 2033, you're at Arizona, and you host Minnesota. In 2034, you're at Virginia Tech, and you host Boston College. Now, obviously, some of those are a little bit more difficult, but you add a nine-game conference schedule onto that, and you've got 11 Power 5 games with three of the historically strongest programs in the SEC every single year. Like, it's rough sledding. And one has to imagine that Alabama won't be this version of Alabama once Nick Saban decides to retire. Like, could he hang on until, you know, the Tide hosts Notre Dame in 2030? Like, who knows? Uh, regardless, if this does end up being the schedule, it, to me it is quite obvious that the SEC is trying to maximize their TV value. Uh, Ross did post his potential guesses as to the three permanent opponents. Uh, rather than read through all of those, I'll just have it linked in the description on YouTube. Uh, but go and check it out. It's very interesting. Uh, it's a weird... It, how about this? It's not weird. It's different. And I think he's tied in enough that he knows what these are going to be. So, just throwing that out there. Hey, if you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and of course, jump in the comments. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app, and make sure to leave a nice five-star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter, at GaryWCE, and the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.